Hello, Larry Koontz for Elite Guitarist. The video performance that you just heard is of the great jazz standard Body and Soul, written by Johnny Green. Johnny Green also wrote uh, Out of Nowhere. Um, this piece, in fact, is so iconic that Charlie Hayden, the great late bassist that used to teach at Cal Arts, um, where I teach, um, has always talked about this piece as being one of the great compositions of all time. And he actually had one of his classes delve into every performance he could find of this piece. Um, so let's get this rolling here. Um, the video performance that you heard basically had a, an entire section of rubato playing for the first A section of this piece and then went into tempo in the A section. So keep that in mind as I talk about these various chord voicings and fingerings. Also, another thing I want to mention is that I decided to do this piece up a half step from its original key. Uh, the original key is E flat minor. Difficult key for the guitar because the lowest D flat that we can play is right here. And it's better to have access to that low E to make it really broad. So that's why I chose to arrange it in a different key. Okay, let's take it right from the beginning, bar one here. Um, this first chord here is an E minor nine. Keep in mind that you can roll all these chords. Rolling chords gives it a nice sense of uh, breadth. So, um, third finger on the fourth fret, fourth string, and then open G, B, and E. Nice, really ringing sound. And then we go to this little melody here. First finger on F sharp, and then you can do a pull off to the E. It's a nice vocal sound. So the first two beats sound like this. And then this next chord is a version of a B7 flat nine. It's a very kind of empty kind of B7 flat nine. In other words, there's no third in it or seventh. On the bottom, you have the root. Um, and that's with your second finger on the fifth string, second fret. First finger is on the first fret, and that's playing the flat nine, and that's the second string. Third finger is on the second fret, first string, and that's the melody. And then we go back to the open E. So that whole bar sounds like this. Second bar, another version of an E minor nine. No root on the bottom. G is played with the first finger on the fifth fret, fourth string. D is played on the seventh fret, third string with the third finger. And then you bar the top two strings at the seventh fret with the fourth finger. And that's your E minor nine. Then we have this little counter melody that happens on the third string. Second finger on C sharp, and that's the sixth fret, third string. So you do this little hammer on, and then you reattack the C sharp on beat three. So that sounds like this. And then we grab the seventh of the A7 um, on the fourth string with the first finger at the fifth fret. And then we grab this little embellishment of the melody that I'm adding on the top. Uh, this B flat is found on the sixth string, sorry, on the first string, sixth fret, uh, with the third finger. So those two beats sound like this. In fact, that's part of an A7 flat nine chord shape. That's where I'm deriving that melody, melodic material. So here's bar two. Here's bar three. Really colorful chord for a D major seven sound. And we're adding a sixth here on the third string. So on the bottom, fourth string, you have F sharp, and that's played with the second finger at the fourth fret. 
B is right above that on the fourth fret with the third finger. C sharp is on the second string, first finger, second fret. And A is with the fourth finger at the fourth fret. And you play that as a simultaneity. You can roll it a little again to give it a sense of dimension. And then we grab the melody here on the first string and you could do a little pull off again and then re-attack the B. That's with the fourth finger going to the second finger and then back to the fourth finger on the first string. Seventh, fifth fret, seventh fret. Now we're gonna grab another chord shape. And that's a part of a B13 sharp 11. I'm giving you the bass so you can hear it. We're not playing the bass because you really don't need it. It's enough to just to have. So this is a little tricky in terms of fingering. You have your fourth finger on the first string at the seventh fret, and then you reach down. This is a little bit of a stretch to hit that F natural on the fourth string at the third third fret with the first finger and then you grab these colors in the middle of the chord with the third and second finger third finger on the sixth fret third string second finger on the fifth fret second string and then you grab the melody pitch you can let go of the chord tones maybe hold the F So here's that whole bar, three, four. And then we're gonna to go to the next chord, which is a D triad over an F sharp. So a first inversion D triad. You have F sharp on the bottom, that's played with the first finger, and that's on the ninth fret, fifth string. D is played at the 12th fret, 3rd finger, 4th string. A is played on the 2nd string on the 10th fret. And E is played on the top string at the 12th fret with the 4th finger. A little bit of a tricky fingering, but a really nice sound. You can, again, you can spread this if you want to make it sound really full. Then the melody goes down to a D, 2nd finger, at the 10th fret, and then you're gonna grab a new voicing. This is a F diminished, and it's a great version of an F diminished. I really love this sound. Um, F on the bottom, fifth string, eighth fret. D is found at the seventh fret, first finger, third string. On the second string, we have G sharp with the third finger, at the ninth fret and on the top on the ninth fret we have the fourth finger on the first string playing the C sharp and then the melody note goes to a B which is found at the seventh fret on the first string with the first finger you play that that note so that whole bar sounds like this Okay, so spreading it out again gives it a sense of kind of fullness, okay? So the next chord here is an E minor seven, and that's a nice spread. I like to really take my time with that when I play that downbeat. On the bottom you have the root, that's played with the first finger on the seventh fret, fifth string, and then you play the B natural, the fifth, on the fourth string with your third finger at the ninth fret. And then you grab the G with your second finger on the second string at the eighth fret. And then on top you have a D natural, which you grab with your fourth finger on the first string and that's at the 10th fret. So that's your E minor seven. This next chord right here, is a passing chord. It's just to set up the next melodic motion. So in other words, this tune has this section where it goes E minor, and then it goes a little bass motion 
to the C sharp half diminished. Okay, so this chord is an E minor chord with the seventh on the bottom, D. And, this, and that D is played with the fourth finger at the tenth fret on the sixth string. B is played at the ninth fret on the fourth string with the second finger. E is played on the third string at the ninth fret with the third finger. And the top note, G, is played on the second string at the eighth fret with the first finger. And you play this little rhythmic thing to make sure that the that that the gesture has some kind of feeling of motion. Now you grab the melody and that's at the 7th fret with the first finger and you're going what you're going to do is you're going to do this hammer on and pull off. It's like a pickup to that B, that triplet here. So B is on the 4th beat and you play this little this little motion into that B. Um, that's played with the first finger at the seventh fret on the first string. Then you grab G on the second string with your second finger. And this is fret, uh, this is on, on fret eight. And then you on, go to fret 10 over here and play the A with your fourth finger on the second string. Okay, so that whole bar sounds like this. Three, four. Again, we're, we're, we're moving rubato, I counted it off, but you can be real liberal with where you place things. Okay, so this next bar starts with an arpeggio of this C-sharp half diminished. This shape, in fact, is a really nice C-sharp minor 7 flat 5 with a 4th degree on top and I arpeggiate it. Okay, so F sharp is found with your fourth finger on the seventh fret, second string. Then you reach down and grab C sharp with your first finger at the fourth fret on the fifth string. G is played with the second finger on the fourth string, fifth fret. And B is part of this bar, this little half bar that you, that you make for the fourth fret, barring from the fifth to the third string. And B is grabbed with that first finger at the fourth fret on the third string. And then there's this little modic, melodic motion to the third of the F sharp seven. Okay, so we're gonna grab that with the third finger on the third string at the fifth fret and then that C goes to B on the fourth fret and then you're going to grab this chord shape. That's an F sharp seven. Okay so that is comprised of F sharp on the bottom and that's played with the first finger on the second fret sixth string. A sharp is played on the third string with the second finger at the third fret and E is played on the second string on the fifth fret with the fourth finger. And then you grab that F sharp with your first finger. You could either let go of the F sharp on the bottom or you, you could hold on to it and still play the F sharp on top by barring that whole second fret. So that whole bar sounds like this. Okay, our next chord here is a B minor. This is bar seven. And it's just a B minor triad. So you, on the bottom you have a B, and that's found at the second fret, fifth string with the first finger. F sharp is the fifth, and that's found on the fourth fret, fourth string. D is found on the second string with the second finger, and you play that with, with uh, I already said it, second finger. All right, then you're gonna make this melodic motion. D goes up to E, and that's played with the fourth finger on the fifth fret, second string, and then you grab F sharp, which is on the first string with the first finger. So you wanna kind of hold those bottom pitches while you play the E and F sharp. 
See how that sounds like a piano left hand while you're playing melodically with the top hand? Okay, this next chord, it's a really rich chord, E minor 11. Really low E, open E, sixth string. G is found at the fifth fret with the first finger, um, fourth string. On the third string, you have your third, uh, fourth finger, and that's at the seventh fret. And on the fifth fret, you also have an A that you're playing on the top string with the second finger. Really rich sounding chord. And now we go to the next chord. Now all you have to do to derive the next chord is play an open A and move that D here to a C sharp with the third finger. So from this chord you can see that I'm holding the first and second finger and just moving the third finger and playing a different bass note. And that's your A7. Then you grab the melody, which goes up to a B on the top string, fourth finger, seventh fret, and then you can grab that F natural with the third finger. All right, you can re we can you can release that C sharp and grab that F natural, which is part of the melody, and that's found on the second string, bar six, um, and you finger it with the third finger. So. So that whole bar sounds like this. So the last chord of this section is a D6. And that is found at the third fret with the first finger on the second string. We're gonna go from the top, B, is found um, on the third string, and you play that with the third finger at the fourth fret. F sharp is found on the fourth fret, fourth string with the second finger, and then on the bottom you have a closed A on the bottom string, fifth fret with the fourth finger. Great version of a D chord with the D, the, the root in the melody. All right, now we're coming to a place in the tune where we're gonna give a real strong sense of moving into time. All right, so this, this section will be played in time. We'll, we'll deal with the time aspect after I describe where the fingerings are. So now we're gonna make a, a descending bass motion to the B, which is the root of, of the B7, which sets up the second section. That's a five chord of E minor. Okay, so we're gonna go five, four, three, two on the fifth string at the fourth fret, moving down to the third fret, down to the second fret, and that gives us this little motion into the bass note, all right? A little chromatic motion. And then we're gonna grab this shape, which is in B7 sharp nine, and we're gonna arpeggiate it. B is found at the second fret on the fifth string with the second finger. D sharp is found at the first fret with the first finger, fourth string. Third string has A, and that's found at the second fret with the third finger. And then the top note is a D natural, and that's found at the third fret with the fourth finger on the second string. And then all you do is you repeat that shape, but you change the top note to C. And you play that C with a part of the bar from the previous chord. You bar that first fret, and that allows you to grab that C on the second string. So this whole bar sounds like this. Now, when you set it up into time, two, three, it's about right there, right? One, two. So maybe I played that a little quick. It could be slower. One, two, B da 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 da. That's where the quarter note is. One, two, B 
be da 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 da. So I'll play that whole bar. Okay, so that takes us to the downbeat of the next section, and um, we'll deal with that in the next video.